Hey guys, Henning Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to look into HDRIs in Blender. Now, if you already know what an HDRI is and where to get them, just skip to the timestamp and we're going to show you how to actually set it up. If you don't know what an HDRI is and how to get them, let's just talk quickly about that. An HDRI is an image map which emulates illumination from the environment. That's what we have set up here. And you can see we get these really nice and natural looking renders. We have really just we just have the lighting from the environment around it. It's like you capture a snapshot of that point in time and that's the lighting that's then applied to the scene. Yeah, like the way I like to think about it in like a stupid way is like you have it's like when you're sitting in front of a really bright television and there's like a green car in front of on the tele television. Now you're going to become green as well. It's kind of the same thing here, just just in a, on a bigger scale. <laughs> yeah, and, and the way these are made is typically you'll have a guy with a really expensive camera and a wide angle lens go into a field and take a bunch of pictures and stitch them together. And that way you create this sort of 360 environment uh, which has all the dynamic range of the light and then you can sort of stitch that together, Photoshop or some other software, and then you create an HDRI. Yeah, the cool thing about this is that you don't only get the lighting information, you also get, you know, all the bounce light. You can see how the shadows are kind of blue here because the sky is blue. So anything that's not in direct sunlight gets this bounce light automatically. Yeah, when we worked in a film, basically every single shot which was done for any kind of movie is lit with an HDRI. If they're integrating, like let's say this phone here was being integrated into the Avengers, now you would go on set, you would shoot an HDRI off the set, and then you would use that HDRI to light this scene. Advantage of HDRI is you get these insanely awesome renders right away. Like there is basically no setup required. We'll of course show you how to actually do that as well. And they just look awesome. You get natural reflections right away and it's just a very easy way to, to light. Disadvantage is you can't really control it that well. Like let's say you want to make this the lighting here a bit softer or you want to change the color of like the, the bounce light here or the environment light. You know, it's not that easy just to do that. You would have to go in and manip manipulate what's going on here. But if you're going for realism, it's a really good idea to get started with this. The nice thing is you can go in and add other lights to this, for example. So imagine the HCRI as your, you know, you're physically in that scene. And then like a camera crew on a film set or in a photo studio, you could just add an area light or a point light or something like that to sort of enhance whatever lighting is there. So it's very much like how you would work with lighting in in the real world. Yeah, you're not limited to it. It, it is like a starting point, but it means that is you can't really just, you can't change the primary light. Yeah, you can't take here. that stuff away. You can only add to it really. So how do you get HDRIs? Well, this used to be very hard and today it's not very hard. <laughs> you go to uh, a site called HDR Haven. Now we have no affiliation with these guys at all. We just know it, they would do absolutely awesome stuff. Now we're like massive sellouts for this site that only <laughs> provides free content. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so here you can go to, uh, you can go to HDRIs and you can just see the different kinds they have. And you can see, you, 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 should, you should get something which is close to what you, what you want your scene to feel like. If you want something like more diffuse, you should go with this. If you want something like more crazy and with direct sunlight, you should go for something like this. Then you can just simply just download the HDRIs here. You have different resolutions. I tend to only use them for um, for lighting and not so much for actual, uh, or not so much for like the background. Uh, I use it for reflections as well. So I don't necessarily need a really high resolution map. So uh, something like one or 2K is enough for a lot of different cases. If you're a crazy person, 16K, <laughs> but that's like more if you want to actually. Yeah, I feel for lighting information, the one 1K is usually fine. Uh, I never really need more than that. Yeah, this is a 1K map and you can see it is blurry in the background, but reflections are sharp and it's, it's not a problem at all. So now we talked about how to actually get it. Let's talk about how we can set up our own HDRIs in Blender. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and we need to search for an add-on called Node Wrangler. This is, this is in Blender by default, so you, you'll all have this. It's a really, really nice node, which just makes your everything to do in a shader editor so much easier. So let's delete the setup we have for now. Nice, red that's, light. That's a little scary. <laughs> that's a little scary. <laughs> so if we were to go to our shader editor, we set up a little custom workspace here, 
but it's not very hard to get this set up. You, you just have to go to the shader editor or uh, make a new area and uh, have the shader editor here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change this to world. In object, this is where you can, you can actually change the shaders. In world, this is where you change the world shader. So here we have a single background node. If we were to increase the strength of this, you can see that everything becomes brighter, or if we were to take this down, you everything becomes darker. This is also how you remove all the ambience by default in Blender, because there is always some ambience. So if, you, if you're wondering where does this little bit of light come from, this comes from this node. And if you're lighting something, you don't really need or want that ambience there because it's something that you don't really, it's just something that affects your light. Yeah, it's it's lighting which is unaccounted uh, yeah. unaccountable. You want to control everything, and then suddenly you have like twenty percent ambience and everything. So the way we we add an HDRI in Blender now is incredibly easy. We just select uh, the background with Control T. This is a feature which exists only with the Node Wrangler, and now you can see that we have a bunch of different things connected up here. What these are specifically doesn't matter that much. Uh, at least not if you want to connect it up. What matters is just we have these three nodes now, and it's very easy to just plug in your HDRI. We do this from the environment texture node and we just click open. Then we go to where we saved out our HDRIs and then we simply just load it in, just double click it. And now you can see that we have these, this beautiful HDRI illuminating our scene. Now, if you wanna change this around, we would go to the mapping node and just change the rotation on the Z. And now you can see what happens. You can see that now it, it actually rotates and you can start to, to plan your lighting. If you want the, the sun to be from behind here, you can do that. So this is an incredibly powerful way of, um, of lighting your scene. There are really only two, two things I, I, I change in here. That is the rotation on, on Z, and then I, I, ch I keep changing what map I have. So if I, if I change the map, you just click on the open image, and you can just very easily just change this to something else. And just start rotating around. Yeah, it makes it pretty quick, especially if you download a lot of maps for HDRI Haven. It makes it really quick to just prototype different lighting settings. So what if we now want to get rid of the HDRI in the background here? There are two ways of doing this. A lot of times you really don't want your, your background here to be visible. You can see it's super low res and it serves absolutely no purpose. So the first way we can do, we can go to our render settings tab right here. Then we can go to the film tab. And here we have a setting called transparent. Transparent just makes it completely transparent. And if you were to render this now, we can save out the output channel. This is a really good way of doing it. A second way is that we can set up a different background here, a background node to have the color and it's not gonna influence the actual illumination. The way we can do this is we can set up a new background by hitting Shift D just to duplicate it. Then we can add a mixed node, a mixed shader node, hit Shift A, now we can do this and we can type mix, we need mix shader. And now we simply just connect these two up into the shader outputs, inputs. Now we have to take the output and connect this into surface and not a whole lot really happened. What's doing now is just blending between these two. What we want though is we don't want to blend between with an opacity slot. We want to blend between using a light path node. This just means that we can now set one of them to to only be affected or only affect camera rays. So let's show what this means. If you hit Shift A again to go into the add mode, then we can hit light path. I can't spell at all. Light path, there we go. And here we can set the camera rays into the opacity slot or into the fact slot. So just drag from camera in here. And now you can see that the opacity is now being blended with this light path node. So if you now want to change the color of the background, we can easily do this if we go to the background node. We can click on the color. It's hard to see because it's actually the same color as the rest of the nodes. But now we can just start to add a color to this. And the cool thing is it doesn't actually affect our lighting. So you can use this if like, if you have a custom setup. You could even change this to be an image different from the HDRI. So it's a pretty powerful setup. It also um, is affected by transparent, the transparent setting. So if you were to enable this, now this color disappears. So yeah, there you have it. Nice and easy setup for um, HDRIs in Blender. It's incredibly easy to set up once you know how to. And setting up the mix shader here isn't necessary. It's just a nice little trick for you. So again, just to repeat, we um, we just select our um, we just select our image, and then we just change this on the set axis to rotate our lighting around.
So if you want to see more content on this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and also click the notification bell as well. And let us know what kind of Blender content you want to see. If you have any questions about this as well, let us know in the comments.